Coinbase is leaving America. And I have to tell you, I don't blame them one bit. And what exactly I am talking about is there was a blog post that was put out uh, yesterday late. And it talks about an update to Coinbase's global scale to go broad and deep. I thought it was interesting because a couple of days ago, we took a look at Brian Armstrong. Uh, there was an interview between him and a host of CNBC. And they talked about the impending legislation that they're going to probably have to fight with the SEC. And they asked him, are you okay with going multiple years? He said, absolutely. But I have to tell you, as things are moving forward, how long is it going to be before they're like, why are we here? Why are we in, in USA? We've done everything we can possibly do, and they still won't give us any kind of clarity or regulation. They still keep suing us. What's the point when I'm going to be treated way better outside? Here's what we got. So Coinbase, working with global regulators, you know, the ones that will listen to them. And of course, we've talked, uh, not just this channel, but all the channels, talked about how Gary Gens was getting raked over the coals by Congress. And you can just see here, this is what should be done. Working with global regulators, Coinbase brings customer protection and trust to the forefront of crypto. Sounds good. Here's what they've been doing. I didn't know this, but uh, from SingPass to free bank transfers, we've launched a seamless, safe, and convenient experience for retail customers in Singapore. Launched our first full crypto experience in Brazil, integrated picks for easy account top-up using Brazilian reals, Localize our app with 24-7 email support. Hey, that sounds pretty good here in America, too. Partner with eBanks and streamline the user onboard process. It also talks about how they're making strides in the Canadian market, but they haven't really done too much. But here's the two biggies. Accelerating our United Arab Emirates plans with Abu Dhabi, global market regulators. Essentially working with the regulators to bring that to the UAE, which is, sounds good to me because that's where all the crypto... Uh, big time people or anyhow, and received our regulatory license to operate from the Bermuda Monetary Authority. Essentially what they're doing is like, look, we're not going to get any kind of licenses here because as much as we ask, we're just not going to get it. So forget it. We're just going to go off to Bermuda and get our licensing down there. They're doubling down in Europe. And this is an interesting stat. 22% of UK adults currently own crypto. And they state the political establishment is very focused on harnessing the potential of the crypto economy and welcome the team received laid this ambition bare. And lastly, they applauded the European Parliament's adoption of MICA. So we'll get to that in a second, but just think about that real quick. If you are an enormous company, you've gone public and you've said to everybody, we want to work here. And the regulars are like, that sounds good. Here's a Wells notice. We're going to sue the pants off you. And all the funds and all the different profits that you make, we're going to try to take that back as we're going to suck you dry with all the lawyers and all the legal fees. And we're going to tie you up in court until you aren't as profitable as you used to be. What is the point of staying here? So on top of this last piece here, European Parliament's adoption of MICA, I'm sure you've heard about this. Congratulations, Europe. You just passed the crypto law, which is something that America should have been doing a long time ago. Instead, we are dealing with a Howey test, which was made in the 1930s for corn and agriculture. So, <laughs> good job, Europe. You're doing a heck of a lot better job than we are. EU lauds comprehensive regulation as MICA crypto law passes. Uh, this will bring in new rules for the industry across the 27 country block. It passed with 517 votes in favor and 38 against and 18 abstained. So this wasn't even close. Europe wants this. European countries want this. The block wants this because they see where the puck is going, not where the puck is at right now. Crypto firms, including Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken, welcome the passing of the landmark, landmark legislation. And let me just say this before I move on. For everybody out there who's like, we don't need regulation. We can do it just fine. We can be all right and we can do those things. Sure, you can do it. You don't need it, right? It's like, here's how I compare it. It's like making $20,000 a year in the United States. You could make $20,000 a year. You can make $50,000 a year or you make $100,000 a year. You can get by on each, each and every one of them. It's gonna be very difficult, let me tell you, especially about where you live. But why not just do it that way? 
So when we talk about regulation, it's not like I'm talking about like we're going to clamp down and everything else. I just talk about guidance and clarity because without that, then we lose our exchanges. And what happens when we have exchanges? Well, things go underground. Can we still get by? Sure. I mean, I don't care. I'll go to some kiosk in some rundown mall and use a Bitcoin uh, ATM and pay an exorbitant amount of fee to get it. But uh, that's what it's going to have to be. So again, I applaud Europe for doing this. Anyhow, not to get off, let me step, step off my soapbox and get into this article. So the MICA legislation means the EU, EU will have a unified approach to crypto asset regulation across all 27 member states, making it possible for firms approved in one country to passport their business into others with minimal paperwork. So you would look at this and go, well, I can see why the different exchanges would like that, but hold on. To achieve initial approval, firms will have to face much higher standards of disclosure, including the preparation of a detailed white paper for each and every asset that they offer. Stablecoin issues are subject to even tighter rules. So the question then becomes, why is it that Coinbase and Kraken and the other Gemini, they're all applauding this? Because they know they're like, we don't care. That's what we wanted anyhow. If you just would have said, just do this, 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 fine. You know, we'll do that just fine. That's what the EU is going to give them. So why wouldn't they just go there? Or you know what? You guys can stay here and get uh, the pantsuit off you or in, and keep receiving Wells notices. Good luck. And this is from uh, Vice President of International Policy at Coinbase. The European Parliament's adoption of MICA today is a pivotal moment for the crypto industry in the region and the work of European policymakers should be seen as exemplary. Listen up, Gary Gensler. So that's what we have. So again, I tip my hat to the EU and, and passing that. So because the, the mic was a long time coming, there was issues that were uh, buried within that, that bill, which would have made it a little bit more difficult for Bitcoin miners. And they rooted that out and corrected it because people stepped up and they said, we don't want this. And this is how it's supposed to be done. You have a bill, you have legislation, you listen to the people because the government is supposed to work for the people not the other way around. That's how I see things. Anyhow, let me know where I'm off in that assumption. And then also, speaking of countries that are getting it right, Russia. Not the war with Ukraine, obviously not, but at least they figure things out like, hey, if you're going to sanction us, here's what we'll do. Russia plans to mine crypto for cross-border deals. This sounds great on its surface, right? Hold on. Crypto trading and payments inside Russia will still be banned. <laughs> so it's not all great. But I got to hand it to Russia for going, look, if you're going to sanction us and we can't, you know, uh, open up trade and commerce, then we'll just talk to the countries that want to use Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency and we'll mine it. And then it'll be a hash rate war. And that's fine with us. And then also I was thinking to myself, is this independent or is this going to be government controlled? Obviously government controlled. Bit River, one of Russia's largest mining companies, previously partnered with the state affiliated oil company, Gazpromneft. Nailed it. So not only is the government saying, we want you to do this, but we're probably going to subsidize you and we're going to give you cheap electrical cost if you're going to partner up with us. Brilliant. I mean, take notes, America. That's how much it works. So that part is good. And then also some other good news, uh, Voyager, which I talked about an, an exorbitant amount of time because I thought it was great until they did something truly stupid, which was give a six hundred and some million dollar loan to Three Arrows Capital uncollateralized. Hey, what are you gonna do? Sometimes you just give a half a billion dollar loan to people who give you a piece of paper that say that we got this bro, unfricking believable. Bankrupt crypto lender Voyager seals deal for 1 billion Binance US acquisition. This was a concern uh, because of course FTX came through and that fell through because SVF is the next Bernie Madoff, I think. Uh, and, then Bo and then Binance stepped up, thank you. And they said, we'll do this. Binance US stepped up and the government stepped in as they usually do and say, no, no, we don't want you to do that. Well, now that's been all smoothed out. This is from the Voyager official community of unsecured creditors. And they state the resolution is embodied in a joint stipulation providing that the appeals will continue with respect to the plan's provision with the government agreeing, US government, that the Binance US acquisition of Voyager's assets may move forward without such provision and will not otherwise be subject to this day. Thank you, America, for allowing us to get some of our funds back. So then the question then becomes, well, how much are we getting back? What's the haircut? Documents and information vary, but I can tell you that we did a video about this about four months ago, 
And in this video, this was a, a balance sheet snapshot of Voyager. This is in millions. They had total cash, 104 million. That should have gone back to everybody or most people. Total crypto loaned, excluding three arrows capital, is 470 million. Hopefully they got that back. Total crypto held 685 million. So total crypto held and loan was one point, eh, we'll just round up, 1.3 billion. And then they talked about it was gonna be three arrows capital loan recovery to be determined, which that's not gonna happen. So the total recoverable assets was $1.2 billion. And if you throw in three arrows capital, which they're probably not gonna get back, but I could be wrong, $1.8 billion. And this was on June 30th, 2022. So what was the market doing back then? Glad you asked. So you can go to CoinMarketCap and around 26 of June, 2022, yeah, 26 of June, just four days uh, beforehand, you were seeing Bitcoin at the price of 21,000. Ethereum was 1,100. Binance, 233. Uh, Cardano, 48 cents. I think it's Cardano's like that same one, actually. But you can just see what, and I think the bigger question will be, what's the market cap? The market cap roughly on that date, June 29th was 896 billion. And on June 30th, uh, 907 billion. Right now, we're sitting at one point. Two four trillion dollars. So they're going to offer up one point zero five billion dollars. So what's it going to be? Again, numbers vary. I've seen everything between thirty percent and sixty six percent of um, what we'll actually get back. And then also, before anybody asks me, I'm in Texas right now. If you live in Texas, they're not going to get that that uh, money transmitter license from Binance US. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. And in that case, you will not get your crypto. You will get a dollar amount sent back to you in some way, shape, or form. I will have more information as that becomes available, but that's what we have. Finally, a little bit of good news. So the funds that I have, my five figures, I'm going to take a haircut, take it out, reinvest into crypto, learn my mistake, just never trust any exchanges, put everything on a cold storage device. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And to finish up, it's a weird story. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why this is even, even here. Credit agency giant TransUnion will deliver credit scores for crypto lending. And I was looking at this, I'm like, what the hell is this? So just so you know, here in the United States, we have three agencies that determine our credit scores. Uh, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So TransUnion's like, hey, we're gonna give you a credit score for DeFi lending. And I'm like, all right, doesn't make any sense, but okay. TransUnion will provide traditional off-chain credit scores for individuals when they apply for loans on blockchain-based protocols. That's pretty much it. And they talked about how they're going to use minimal information and it will also be KYC and AML and all that good stuff. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, do we really need this uh, for DeFi loans? I mean, like, that's the whole point of collateral. You put up your, your crypto and you get funds back and, and that's it. So why do I need a, a credit score? I can only, the only way I, I can think this actually works out is if you say, okay, I want a loan in, in crypto. I'm going to put up, I want 100,000. Uh, I'll put up 25,000 of my crypto, loan me the rest, and I need a credit score for some reason, and then I'll get the 75,000 out of it. I guess, because when I've done loans before, it was you had to double or triple collateralize and then get a reasonable percentage point. Uh, and that's how it worked out. But for me, I'm like, maybe this would work for some people. But again, I'm like, we're in the new frontier. It's almost as ridiculous as, I don't know if you knew this, but Netflix just yesterday, yesterday, ended its DVD by mail service. Who here uses DVDs? And some of us, I guess, did. So I'm just thinking, about, and this was seriously, this just, just came out April 18, 2023. So I guess a couple of days ago. So I'm just looking at this like, maybe there's some people out there that would go for this, I guess, but I don't see the point. Uh, kind of like DVDs. Anyhow, let me know where I'm wrong here. And then uh, to leave off on some good news, and this is fantastic, Dutch Court agrees the free turn of cash developer, Alex uh, Pertsev, pending trial. Just so you know, this was a gentleman who was a developer for Cash App, I'm sorry, Cash App, Tornado Cash, and he's set to be released on bail after nine months in detention without a trial, just for creating software. He's been released on April 26th. That's, uh, was that six days away? and without having to pay any financial security and will be permitted to return home. Just so you know, he was arrested on August 10th, 2022 by the Dutch Fiscal Information 
and investigation service or fiat. So congratulations, because this guy shouldn't have been in jail at all. So I'm glad to see that something actually works. The wheels of justice do move slow, but sometimes they actually move. And that is it for this part. And also, who wants some money? So, you know, on this channel, I've been uh, pretty bullish on, on crypto gaming coming up. I'm going to be more so into the casual. If you want to find like, like, like the really cool stuff, uh, go to Crypto Stash. He deals with all the AAA ranked games and all that good stuff. Great channel. Uh, for me, I'm more of a casual gamer when I've just got nothing to do and I'm sitting around on my phone. But uh, Alaska Gold Rush is a game that just came out, just launched, and uh, they said, hey, well, how would you like to give away some money to your, to your subscribers? Sure, why not? So I put out this tweet the last couple of days ago, hey, uh, Alaska Gold Rush listing is about 24 hours. To kick it off, I'm going to give away $100 worth of BUSD. Here's how to get a chance to win. Follow me, follow them, retweet, join Alaska Telegram group. Bing, bang, boom, done. So let's pull it out. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, before I do that, we just did a really good show. Me, Ben, and Guy over at uh, NFA Live. This is on Ben's channel uh, this morning. Go check it out. It's pretty interesting. It was a lot of macro stuff and global liquidity and things that were going on in just the macroverse. So I linked that in the description. Go check it out. I always love doing those ones. We'll do it. Uh, next week, I'll be in Las Vegas, so we'll do it over there. Uh, but for this, this, these winners, and if you don't follow me on Twitter, there's a link in the description. Sometimes I do these, sometimes actually I do giveaways. And it says, uh, same thing. So I'm going to load this Twitter picker. Winner count is going to be three people. You had to follow at news asset at Alaska game, the telegram group. I can't put it in there. So, you know, we'll go on the honor system. Hopefully you did it. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Continue. Ah, look at this. So 39 entries, 39 people did what they're supposed to do. And I appreciate every one of you. And let's see here. We'll just continue. And let's begin the draw. Da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. 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 That's a long time. Status, 39 entries, winners, show rejected. Oh, I hate when Twitter picker doesn't work. Yeah. I guess that's it. Nobody wins. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Well, you know what? This could be the reason. Oh, now I got to do this again. Listen, if you want to stick around, don't stick around. Have fun. Get out of here. Ah, look at all these ads. Jeez, sweet Mary and Joseph. No wonder. This is what I love about uh, Brave Browser. Let's do this again. <laughs> sweet Joseph. All right. Winner count. Two, three. Hey, I fly. I must have a picture. Da, 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 da. Okay. Now there's 46 entries. Congratulations. Continue. Begin the draw. Hey, look at that. Oh, Slawik, you were so close. Man, you were close. But you didn't do something. So, sorry. So, let's see. Before I get a bunch of scammers... Trinity.crypto, I will follow you. That's another perk. Like if you win, I'll follow you. And then I will direct message you later. So I don't have to deal with people going, hey, I'm Trinity.crypto. Give me my hundred bucks. No, you're a filthy scammer. All right. So Aaron. I am divorced. I'm Dalverse, <laughs> Trinidad Crypto. I will reach out to you. Just need your address and I'll send you $100. And that's it for today. So look, 
Thanks for stopping by. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Again, uh, crypto is not a set it and forget it type of uh, investment. You really need to keep up to date with this. So if it's not me, pick somebody that you like and just keep up to date so you don't get left in the dust. But that's it.